Now we have the ability to calculate skewness, this number, but until we give that number some context, it's not very useful information. So we need to talk about what does skewness mean? When we get that numerical value, how do we interpret it? What does it tell us about our data? So if your skewness ends up equaling zero, then you would know that your data is perfectly symmetrical. So if we drew that out as a histogram, a perfectly symmetric distribution would be one where the center is that tallest point, and then each side of that distribution is an exact mirror image. So if we used our center bin as that line of symmetry, we should see exactly the same picture on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. So that would be an example of perfect symmetry. Uh, however, we rarely ever see that. Um, whenever we consider real-world real data, it's rarely, if ever, perfectly symmetric. Instead, we get data that we can refer to as approximately symmetric. So something close to that symmetric pattern, even if it's not perfectly symmetric. So we'll probably never get that value of zero for symmetry or for skewness, but we can assign some range of values that'll help us interpret our result. <clears throat> so if we get a skewness that's less than negative one, or more than negative one, then we would say that our distribution is highly skewed. So very, very far from being symmetric. If our skewness is between negative one and negative one half, or between positive one half and positive one, Oh, let me go back. Uh, if skewness is less than negative one or more than positive one, sorry about that. So if it's less than negative one, more than positive one, it's highly skewed. If it's between negative one and negative one half or between one half and one, then our distribution is moderately skewed. And if our skewness is between negative one-half and positive one-half, then the distribution is approximately symmetric. So again, we'll probably never get that value of zero, but we'll get numbers that are close to it. So anything between negative one-half and one-half, we can consider to be symmetric. So another way to represent that same information would be to look at this as values on a number line. So we have cutoffs at negative one and positive one, negative one half, positive one half, and zero. So if we have if we end up with a skewness that's anything larger than one or smaller than negative one, we're talking about data that's highly skewed. If our value ends up being between negative one and negative one half, or positive one half and positive one, then that data is moderately skewed. And if we get a value that's between negative one half and positive one half, so somewhere in that range, then our data is symmetric. And again, whenever we talk about symmetric, we mean really approximately symmetric. Zero would be perfect, but anywhere in that range from negative one half to one half, we can consider to be approximately symmetric. There's more information that we can pull from this skewness number. We can also use that number to tell us whether our distribution is left skewed or right skewed. So if we look at these two distributions below, this is slightly different looking than a histogram, but it's the same idea. We could consider drawing bins to represent our distribution here. So think of this line as being that curve that connects the peaks of each of our bins for a histogram. What we have on the left here is a data set that's left skewed, 
we have this tail headed off to the left. So we have a distribution that's left skewed. And if we look at that skewness, we see that that's a negative. So if our skewness is less than zero, or if it's negative, that's going to tell us that our data is left skewed. If our data is right skewed, we have a skewness that's positive. So if our skewness is greater than zero, we have something that's right skewed. So if we're at positive one or higher, we know our data is highly skewed and it's going to be right skewed. If we're at negative one or lower, we know that our data is going to be highly skewed and in this case, left skewed. Now let's use that information, these rules that we have established for skewness, to provide an interpretation for the skewness that we calculated in example two. So the skewness we came up with was about 1.27. And using those guidelines that we have above, that means the data is highly skewed since it's larger than one. And since it's positive, we know that it's skewed to the right. So the skewness we calculated was about 1.27, meaning that data is highly skewed to the right. We'll take a look at one last example. In this case, we have two different data sets that we want to consider. We're going to compare the skewness of these two distributions and provide interpretations for both of those results. So in this data set, we have the number of video games each year that were rated T for Teen or E10 Plus uh, by, the inter, by the ESRB, the Entertainment Software Rating Board. So I already have these values typed into StatCrunch. We can again go to Stat, Summary Stats, and then Columns. So in this case, I want to calculate the skewness for two different data sets. So I can do that at the same time by clicking on the first data set and then holding Control and clicking on the second data set. Or again, if you're on a Mac, hold that command key. We'll still just scroll down to skewness. And in this case, in this case, when we click compute, we'll generate two different results. So we have one value for our skewness for the first data set, which was those games rated T for teen, and one skewness for data sets that or for the data set of games that were rated E10 plus. So about negative 0.3 and negative 1.15. So again, we want to provide some interpretation, what those results mean. So the T data set in this case is approximately symmetric since the skewness of negative 0.30 is between negative 0.5 and 0.5, or between negative 1 half and 1 half. So the first data set we know that's approximately symmetric. The E10 plus data set is highly left skewed. Because the skewness um, of negative 1.15 is below negative 1. So since our skewness is below negative 1, that means it's highly skewed, and since that's a negative, it means it's highly left skewed. So those are the interpretations that we can provide to those numbers, what those results actually tell us. As we move on to talk about measures of center, spread, outliers, this uh, idea of measuring skewness is going to be a part of determining which method or which approach we use for different problems.